Good evening and welcome to Studio 2120. This is the place where brilliant minds come together to feed on God's Word. Call a friend and tell them that the Emmanuel Kingdom News is on the air. Today's message is entitled, Will You Answer the Call to Destiny? We also have a subtitle and it is Manifesting Your God-Given Purpose. A person who does not have a clear vision for their life tends to lead a very limited existence. Typically, people without a clear vision are easily distracted, have a tendency to wander from one idea to another, and often making unwise decisions that, in the long run, will rob them of their destiny. On the contrary, when a person has a vision, their lives become very stable. Now, why is that? And thank you for asking. Because a vision can actually simplify your life. You see, vision essentially will or can control the majority of your choices. Once you know where you are going, then you know automatically what roads will not take you there. If you know what to do, then you should automatically know what not to do. Vision defines your purpose and or your what to do in life. You see, your vision is what gives you your address, while destiny dictates your decisions. Without a vision, the people perish. Without vision, it's often difficult for you or for some of us to refuse something that is free. Many times, free gifts comes with a price. In other words, this means I will give you this if you will give me that. Warning. You may be approaching impending danger. Do not give the enemy room to prostitute your gift. Always cover and protect your gift. Your dream, your vision, your purpose is essentially your gift and your life's purpose. Without a vision, temptations are seeking to pull you literally into someone else's vision, which is designed by the enemy to prevent you from realizing your own God-given purpose. Statistics have proven that people who have manifested their vision tends to live longer, healthier, and profitable lives. To unearth your personal vision starts with understanding who God has created you to become, and specifically what he has called you to do. Stress and complacency comes from not knowing what to do with your life. And if you are over the age of 50, you really don't have a lot of time for experimentations. You may need to make some painful decisions immediately and reposition yourself on the path that leads to your purpose and destiny. Because face it, we are not getting any younger. But thank God for his grace, mercy, and patience. He said he will not leave you nor forsake you. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 states, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Recognize there may be some people in your life who are simply no longer necessary. And no, I'm not suggesting that you throw them away because we all fall short of the glory of God. 
at the same time, I would like to reinforce that it's not expedient to waste valuable time going in the wrong direction because destiny is constantly calling you. My question is, will you answer the call of destiny? When you are in great pursuit of your destiny, you cannot afford to have any distractions. Raison d'etre is a foreign phrase that we borrowed from the French, which means our reason for existing. Because we were all born with a purpose. Therefore, our life's mission is to manifest our purpose. In order to fulfill our purpose, it is absolutely mandatory to practice self-discipline and self-control, which is a sign of inner strength and self-control of our actions and reactions. The reality is self-discipline is what gives us the power to stick to our decisions, to stay focused and follow them through without changing our minds and or reneging on our spoken words. This is the solution for achieving our goals. When you have a clear vision, it simplifies your life. You can go to Barnes and Nobles, walk up to a bookshelf and immediately know what book not to buy. Vision dictates everything. As it has been pointed out, everything you do should be motivated by your vision. Vision should be the source of your human motivation. Again, it simplifies your life. Do you know why some people are poor? Because poverty is not a problem, it is a result. Most people are poor because they don't know who they are. Remember that. On a side note, it is always important to share your family's rich history and the stories of your parents and grandparents and the things they had to overcome. This will inevitably help their children recognize that they came from hardworking people with good stock and values. Simply put, people to be proud of. The Bible tells us that a good man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. And on the flip side, if you were never taught about the importance of your family history and you had no shoulders to stand upon and there was not a dominant male figure in your home, and there is no living will and testament of land, property, or money with your name on it waiting for you to inherit? Well, Jesus has a plan for you, my friend, with your name on it. Turn with me, please, to Romans. We're going to read chapter 8. Verse 17, and it reads, Since we are his children, we are joint heirs together with Christ Jesus, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Let the church say amen. Back to our text study. Vision is what helps you identify yourself before the people. And because they know who you are, they know what to step to you with. And of course, they know what not to step to you with. In other words, don't allow anyone to waste your time with foolishness. Make yourself a person of value. If someone had to think about something that reminds them of you, what would it be? Would it be good? Well, that's a question that only you can answer. The blessed hope is that you would become so good and skilled in an area 
that they cannot ignore your gift. The world is filled with average people. If you are listening to me now, newsflash, newsflash, stop being average. Stop being a part of the status quo. If you are called to be a mover and a shaker, you need to step outside the box to distinguish yourself from the rest. Vision is what gives you this unique discovery about what you are called to master. Sight is the ability to see things as they are, but vision gives you the capacity to see things the way they should be. Every true vision will be tested for authenticity. If your vision is truly from God, life will test it to prove that it's authentic. So get used to the idea of overcoming obstacles. If your vision is real, contrary speaking, if your vision was suddenly terminated because of an issue or a setback, it was probably not authentic. Again, vision dictates everything. People who have no vision in their lives, they tend to throw off restraints and self-control. But when you know what you were born to do, it governs how you should carry yourself and the high standards you should live by. You were born to specifically discover what is right for you, including your gifts, callings that you are predisposed to, considering we were created in the minds of God before the foundation of the world, everything else may be give or take. Thus, preoccupation with a give or take mentality is not a substitute for the right thing. Staying the course is staying with what you were called or created to do. Again, whatever you are born or created to do shall not be erased. That's why I am convinced we were born for more than just to go to work, go to church, and pay bills. Can I get an amen? You were created to make a difference in the world. With the rich life God granted you, this is why you are watching the Emmanuel Kingdom News at this appointed time. It's not a coincidence that you are watching this message. It is simply God remaining anonymous. For a lot of people, the distance between their dreams and their reality is what gets them stuck. The only way forward is to be real about what it's going to cost you. Figuratively speaking and literally, you must be honest and truthful with yourself of what it's going to take to be successful. It doesn't come easy. You are going to have to go out there and take what belongs to you. No one is going to give you anything worthwhile. No rescue team is going to rescue you. No federal aid or grant money will be available for you. I learned early on when I bought a book years ago that claimed or alleged that government funds were allocated to help minorities and women acquire money to start a business. So I called the 1-800 number that was listed in the book. A man answered my call. I explained to him that I purchased this book entitled Government Grants. Its purpose is to teach how to access money to start a business. I asked the gentleman, what should I do to begin this process? And the man said, in no uncertain terms, nobody is giving out grant money. I said, well, on page 47, 
it explains the process of how to acquire grant money. Then the man startled me. He shouted over the phone, look lady, no one is giving out free money. The man is just trying to sell his book. Now for me, the lights came on in my head and I suddenly experienced my first Oprah Winfrey epiphany. Well, that was then in the late 90s and this is now 2018. I am 56 years of age. Somehow my vision, purpose, and raison d'etre, which is my reason for existing, have not yet come to fruition. The upside is, I know the good Lord will not call me home to glory prior to finishing my God-given assignment. And on a side note, for those who know me well can attest that no matter what I'm going through, I will always find a silver lining. When a person has discovered and fulfilled their destiny, they are more inclined to welcome death because death is never a threat to a person who has fulfilled his or her purpose. The apostle Paul, for example, was not afraid to die. As a matter of fact, the apostle Paul died willfully. He decided to die. Let me quote you. Second Timothy chapter four, I'm going to read verses six and seven. And it reads, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have been poured out like a drink offering and there is nothing left for me to do. I am now ready to be offered. Wow. Paul was able to speak confidently about life after death. Likewise, we have accepted Christ in our lives and believe that he died and rose again, having confidence that in him, even when we die, because he rose from the dead, we have the precious opportunity to live again as well. I believe the major reason for Paul's confidence was that the special revelation that God gave him during his three years in the desert after he fled from Damascus following his conversion, when God changed his name from Saul, who persecuted the Christians, to Paul, the follower of Jesus, in which Paul was speaking of himself in the third person when he was caught up to the third heaven and allowed to see things that were astonishing, mesmerizing, glorious, that mere words from earth could not articulate. Paul had a lot of personal successes. And after Jesus died, his message did not. Words of his teachings spread to Jewish communities across the empire. This was helped by the energetic apostles such as Paul and by the modern communications of the Roman empire over 30 years, Paul clocked up around 10,000 miles traveling across the Roman Empire, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul was very successful when it mattered most. His life became a manifestation of the cross. He was not only one who preached the cross, but one who lived the cross. His meekness, endurance, infirmities, weeping, suffering, and chains were all the manifestation of the life of the cross. As a result, he was able to reproduce this cross in the hearts of many. Success is something that everyone wants. Let's talk about personal success from a kingdom perspective. In order to succeed in life, 
there are five questions that you must answer. And every human being on earth are trying to answer these five questions, including our awesome viewers. These five questions literally control the human race. These five questions motivate everything we do. These five questions are so powerful that they fulfill everything on this planet that humans desire. These five questions are the source of all of your problems. They are the source of all of the crime in your cities. They are the source of all of the broken homes and divorces. They are the source of all corruption. Every problem that humans are faced with are the source of these five questions. In other words, our attempt to find the answer to these five questions is the cause of all of our actions and reactions. As a matter of fact, our television viewers and those watching on the World Wide Web and on other means of social media are watching the Emmanuel Kingdom News because of these five questions. The answers to these five questions are the root cause of all of our behaviors. In the interest of time, let's try and condense our human lives experience to these five questions. The first question is, who am I? The second, where am I from? The third, why am I here? The fourth, what can I do? And the fifth question is, where am I going? Okay, the first question, who am I? It may be a tough question to answer for some. For others, it may be a frightening question. The average human has never really answered the question, who am I? This question deals with identity. To those who don't know who they are, are more inclined to struggle with self-identity. That is why many acquiesce to imitating others. For example, many teenagers and young adults take pride in sporting the Michael Jordan, Kayon West, and Adidas Yeezy sneakers and other individuals may choose to don themselves with fancy designer names of famous people as if it will add value to them. The inferences are that many purchase and wear expensive name brand clothing and jewelry because it makes them feel good. And the compliments of others are an added bonus. Okay, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3. Verse 3. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. And please let me be the first to acknowledge that I am just as guilty of purchasing name brand clothing and purses. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with incorruptible beauty, with a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Granted, the truth is, we have to buy clothes when the need arises. But it doesn't have to come from places like the exclusive and expensive Somerset Mall in Troy, Michigan. And yes, I went shopping there once and I purchased a pair of pantyhose and a cup of Starbucks coffee. Please, whatever you choose to subscribe to, don't lose yourself trying to look and dress like people you see on TV. The industry of fashion is built upon your lack of identity. 
They feed on you buying other people's images while neglecting your own. Upon After stripping myself from the cares of this world and its influences, that was a large subtraction of who I thought I was. I found myself without much, but what was left was all that I truly needed to run this race in Christ. I have, I have learned to embrace my true self by working on my areas of weaknesses and by accentuating my areas of strengths. Completely aware that I was born imperfect and my greatest assets lies from within the core of my true being. The older I become, my attention focuses more on building my inner person in ways that will give God the glory and adorning myself with God's word. It's safe to assume that beauty on the exterior fades. And the second question is, where am I from? This is a question of heritage or source. As a person of color, African-American, it's safe to assume that at least most of us, our roots are somewhere on the continent of Africa, a place where many of us have never stepped foot upon. By obvious reasons that our ancestors were brought to America with shackles on slave ships. During our early American experience, there was a great reproduction of biracial and multiracial children. That said, truly, we cannot exactly pinpoint where we came from by our ethnic heritage. Um, and in America, to become successful in life, you must ask the question, where did I come from? The challenge of this question is, we cannot truly know where we are going until we can first figure out where we came from. Where am I from is the question that many of us struggle with. When I personally cannot figure out something, I pick up the multicultural book. And yes, it is the Holy Bible. When Paul was speaking to the Christians in Galatia of the Galatian church, he reminded them of their new identity since they place their faith in Jesus Christ. You see, to be baptized into Christ means that they identify with Christ, having left their old sinful ways and fully embracing the new life in Christ. So ask yourselves to recite these powerful words. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. With having your identity in Christ, believe me, there is a successful future with your name on it. And it is waiting for you to take it from. Now that you truly know where you are from, you now have the key to move forward. The next question, why am I here? Received. This is the question of purpose. This one is tied to questions one and two. Believe it or not, that is the question that many have never considered. If you don't know who you are, or where you are from, you may never be able to figure out why you are here. Again, it's the question of purpose. First of all, you should know that God did not create us because he was lonely and did not have anything else better to do. I want you to know that God was in good company with his son, and the Holy Spirit.
long before we came on the scene. Turn with me to Genesis. We're going to read chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, Let us make man in our own image. And suddenly, you and I became God's masterpiece. Despite not needing us, God chose to create us anyway out of his everlasting love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 reads, And because of that love and his wonderful creativity, he made us so we can enjoy all that he is and all that he's done. In addition, I am so grateful for his infinite wisdom, which chose to make us a part of his eternal plan. And beloved, that is the answer to why I am here. The next question, what can I do? Has everything to do with your potential? Asking, what am I capable of? What is my true power? What do I have the capacity to fulfill? 90% of people live beneath their potential. It has been said that most of us only use about 10% of our brain power. And I want you to know that what you are settling for may be a disappointment to our God. And what you are proud of, God may be ashamed of. You see, God is completely aware of your true potential because it was a part of his endowment in us when we were in the mind of God. In my studies, I read that to become a genius, all you have to do is use 1% more of your brain power than others. And that's what they call a genius. I tell you, that's how mediocre our culture is. On a side note, I would like to say that I was raised up in the Battle Creek Public School System. Truly, I have nothing but great things to say about the schools I attended, starting with Dudley Elementary, W.K. Kellogg Junior High, and Battle Creek Central High School. Bearcats, pride of the state. And I am fully aware that the surrounding schools in our area are also top notch. That said, let's remove ourselves from the Battle Creek area and let's look at the big picture from a nationwide point of view. Note, I'm not going to share any statistics. I just want to make a point. You see, the educational system does not have the mechanisms to accurately measure how much a student knows. It's hard to measure intelligence because everything is relative. Real life is essentially the ultimate IQ test. I have always been a strong proponent of education and recommending that college should follow directly after high school. Unfortunately, the cost of tuition has skyrocketed. The student loan debt in the United States has reached a staggering 1.2 trillion. And the average graduate will have to repay more than $35,000. Now, my point is, if you cannot afford the high cost of college tuition, God created you with a purpose. And I want you to make it your life's mission to fulfill it. And yes, you may have to hold a low level position in a restaurant, business or factory with a 401k plan. My advice is to let your 401k plan accumulate throughout the years 
and later you will have something substantial to bring to the table. This will afford you some great options to work with. Or you can create your own pot of gold by saving 10 or 20% of your weekly or bi-weekly earnings. The question is, where would America be without people like Bill Gates of Microsoft or Ted Turner of Turner Broadcasting Company or Steve Jobs of Apple Incorporated or Kobe Bryant, NBA legend, who earned an SAT score of 1,080 resulted in him being eligible for a full ride scholarship to Duke University, but he was drafted by the NBA Charlotte Hornets fresh out of high school. Again, where would America be without Beyonce, businesswoman, singer, dancer, and actress, Tyler Perry, director, screenwriter, actor, and Mark Zuckerberg, creator of Facebook, a technology entrepreneur and philanthropist. Just to list a few names of very, very successful people who never earned a bachelor's degree, but instead took advantage of the American free enterprise system. And each person mentioned has a net worth earnings in the millions and the billions because they use what God gave them. What you can do resides inside of you and only you can bring it out. Again, where would America be without you? Our next question. Where am I going is a question of destiny. Destiny is a predetermined course of events that will ultimately determine their future. Jeremiah chapter one, I'm going to read verse five and it reads, before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. During that time, Jeremiah was destined to be a prophet of the nations, and he later accomplished his goal. Many of us have earthly minded goals and work very hard to bring them into reality. Habakkuk, Chapter 2, verse 3 reads, I'm going to read Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3, and it reads, For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end and will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come to pass and will not delay. Life, life and death. Blessings and cursings. When we speak of a person's destiny from this end of the spectrum, we are speaking of what happens to a person in the end of their life. Jesus said, you will live forever. The question is, where? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not die, but have everlasting life. God promised eternal life to all who believe in and accept Jesus Christ as their savior. Do we have any responsibility beyond believing? Well, let's look at it from this angle. Salvation is free but it isn't cheap. And we as people typically do not want anything cheap. In fact, when I was a kid, I did not want my mom to buy my gym shoes 
from Kmart because we considered them to be cheap shoes. Instead, my preference for my mom to take me to Jack Pearl's shoe store to buy me a new pair of Converse All-Star shoes. Because in my mind, as a child, Converse's were considered to be stylish and high quality. It seemed like they could make me run faster, jump higher, and dominate on the basketball court. My point is, as a kid, we quickly learn the difference between high quality and cheap, right versus wrong, good versus evil. Again, salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Jesus paid the cost for our gift of life. When he surrendered his life, that we would enjoy the gift of eternal life with him. And his expectations for us are to surrender our lives for salvation as well. Our love for and commitment to Christ must be more important to us than any other relationship. Each of us must be willing to bear our own cross, to faithfully follow Jesus, even through life's most difficult challenges. Always keep in remembrance of the truth that Jesus gave his life for us. Therefore, we must be willing to give our lives to follow him. In my conclusion, I must say that obedience is the meat of the matter. Number one, obedience is an act of worship. It's important to remember that believers are not justified or made righteous by our obedience. Because as first stated, salvation is free. Salvation is a free gift of God and we can do nothing to merit it. True Christian obedience flows from a heart of gratitude for the grace we have received from the Lord. Number two, God rewards obedience. Over and over again, we read in the Bible that God blesses and rewards obedience. Turn with me to the book of Luke, and we're going to read chapter 11, verse 28. And it reads, Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. In order to excel in anything worthwhile, we must put it into practice. Medical doctors practice medicine. Attorneys, practice law. Educators practice teaching and learning. Police officers practice law enforcement. LeBron James and Steph Curry practice basketball. Tom Brady practice football. And T.D. Jakes practice ministering God's word. Anything we aspire to do well we must routinely put it into practice. Number three, obedience to God proves our love. Turn with me, please, to 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 2 and 3. And it reads, By this we know that we love the children of God, and when we love God and obey His commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Number four, obedience to God demonstrates our faith. Okay, we're going to read 1 John chapter 2, 
verses three through six, and it reads, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Number five, obedience is better than sacrifice. First Samuel chapter 15, we're going to read verses 22 and 23, and it reads, But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the fat of a ram. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the commands of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. My God. Six, disobedience leads to sin and death. The obedience of Adam brought sin and death into the world. The disobedience of Adam brought sin and death into the world. But Christ's perfect obedience restores our fellowship with God for everyone who believes in him. And there are many scriptures in the Bible to verify. On your spare time, if you begin searching the scriptures for yourself, you will be amazed at how you will suddenly develop a hunger to feed on God's word as often as possible. Number seven, and through obedience, we experience the blessings of holy living. Only Jesus Christ is perfect. Therefore, only he could walk in sinless obedience. But as we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us from within, we also grow in holiness. And number eight, and to follow up on our fifth question, where am I going? The promise of entry to the new Jerusalem is both beautiful and unnerving. The idea of such a splendid city that Jesus left earth to prepare for his children. It is definitely wonderful to think about. A place where nothing is fraudulent, nothing is dirty, dangerous, or ugly, or smelly, or hateful, will ever be able to enter. And the pearly gates will be a dazzling sight. Nonetheless, we have all done bad things and told lies. The question is, does this mean that we will not be able to enter the New Jerusalem? The answer is, it depends. We are all sinners. But those whose sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus are named in the Lamb's Book of Life. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered, those who are in Christ are the children of God and will receive an inheritance. Personally, I am confident that my name was written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. He foreknew me before I was formed in my mother's womb and consecrated me with a vision and purpose and put me on my path to run my race. Life is a short span of time, likened unto a vapor. Then there is eternity. Please don't put all of your stock in the vapor and discount salvation. 
Go against the grain and answer your call to destiny. And yes, I know where I am going. Again, thank you for watching the Emmanuel Kingdom News on Primetime Mondays at 8.30 Eastern Time on Channel 16 in the Battle Creek metropolitan area on the Access Vision TV network. Again, this is Sherelle Cotton and good evening.